Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to be reviewing this Win 4214 drill press. This is the 12 inch drill press version from Win. It's got uh, laser crosshairs and it's also got a work light. So I did some research and the reviews on this thing are pretty good. Uh, the price was very decent and so yeah I decided to give it a try. I'm in the middle of another project right now that will be coming up very soon to my channel and I needed a drill press. So let's open this thing up and put it together and see what it's about. All right, so the packaging looks pretty good. Uh, I mean, I don't see anything really broken. There's, well, besides styrofoam. <laughs> Uh, but it looks like it's packaged pretty well. Everything's kind of separated into its own little place. I don't really see how it could get damaged too badly on the transit. Uh, so we got the manual here, which will come into a lot of use. And here's the base of the drill press. And it's actually got some good weight to it. I, I mean, it feels like it's cast iron. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. But we'll just set this off to the side for right now. Another thing that I've noticed and I noticed on the wind jointer was when they ship these things, they cover them in grease. So I have my <laughs> WD-40 here. I actually got this as a tip from another video that I watched that was an unboxing and I can't believe I didn't think of that before <laughs> instead of just trying to wipe and manage everything. So it looks like we have all of our handles here for uh, the drill press and maybe the something for the the chuck in there? I don't know. We'll see soon. So next up looks like it's our table for the drill press. So here's our drill press table and one of the things that was pretty cool about this, I thought at least, was it's got this little extendable section. It's wrapped in plastic right now so you can't really see it but it's got a little roller here and it actually slides out a little way so you can support uh, something that you're working on, on the, off the table here. So, seems pretty cool. We got this little piece here sticking out the bottom of that, so I'm going to turn it this way so we don't have that poking down into the bench. And I'm just going to set this right on the base, honestly. Why not? Next, we have got this big piece. So we've got the column here that goes into the base and supports the head of the drill press. I'm just going to set this off to the side here. Hopefully that doesn't fall. <laughs> and then we have just the head of the drill press. So I'm going to get this out of the box and set it off to the side and then I'll get rid of this box. Oh, hold up. There's more. Ah. It's Chuck. All right. So, this out. So I'm just going to hope that it can settle right there for a bit. So like I said, next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to wipe everything down real quick with this just to get the grease off so, you know, I'm not making a mess. All right, we've got everything wiped down now, and the first step is to connect this column to the base. So I'm gonna take these hex screws that came with the drill press, and I'm just going to screw them in. And you can use an adjustable wrench, or you can use a socket wrench. I'm just gonna use a socket wrench. And if you use a socket wrench, uh, a 5 8 fits this pretty perfectly, uh, or you could go with a 16 millimeter. Either one, they both fit really well. So let's connect it. 
And actually, I've realized you can just start these pretty easily with your fingers. So, and then I'll tighten them up with the socket wrench. And that's good. I reckon that'll stay on there until it falls off. All right, next we're gonna attach this crank handle to this little shaft right here. And one of the important things we need to do is make sure the flat side, which is currently on the bottom right here, we need to make sure that this set screw is installed where the flat part of the shaft is. So to make that a little easier, I'm just gonna turn this a little bit right there. That way when I install this, I can see I'm putting the set screw right where this flat portion is. So I'm just gonna slide this on here. And now I'm just gonna use this little uh, Allen wrench that was provided with the drill press and just tighten that set screw down onto that flat portion of the shaft. Look at that. We about have ourselves a working drill press. Almost done. So the drill press comes with these two uh, table lock handles, I guess is what they're called. It's just like a little handle with the screw on the front or the back. I don't know. Depends on which way you're looking at it, I guess. But they seem to be basically the same thing. Uh, one goes in the front here and one goes in the back. So if you notice, there's these little stickers here that say insert the table locking handle from this side. So just going to screw this in this way like so. Once again, not going to screw it in very tightly. Just going to screw it in enough so it goes, pokes through the other side a little. There we go. And now I'll show you the back. So as you can see here, this is the front. So as you can see here in the back, there's another sticker that tells you which side to uh, thread the screw in from. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do what it tells me to do. Have lots of practice with that. You married people out there know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, so this seems like it's actually tightening this uh, collet over this column here. So I don't wanna tighten it too much right now. I'm guessing this is going to lock this in place so you can't change it with the crank. So I'm just going to, just a little bit, so I know it's catching right there. So I'm going to leave that there for now. And once we get it to the appropriate height, then I'll lock it in. All right, so the next part is to install this table onto this support right here. The only thing that kind of threw me was, in, when I was reading the manual, it said, install the table in the same direction as the base. How are you supposed to know what the front and the back is? I don't know. There's not really any marking. There's a G right here, right here. I don't know what that means, but I don't know. I'm just gonna install this so that the roller, this thing right here, I'm just gonna install this where the roller is on the left side of the drill when I'm looking at it. And I'm only doing that because that's what the picture on the outside of the box has. So yeah, I'm putting the roller on the left. So we just set this down inside of here, like so. And then we tighten this little handle right here. Now that one I did tighten pretty daggone tight just because I don't want this moving or coming out of that. I don't know. We'll see how that works. All right, guys, we got the base assembled. We got the table connected here. So the next thing we need to do is actually put the drill press head on top of this column here. So it's kind of heavy and my bench is a little high, so I'm going to have to really lift this up and set it on. Um, I think it weighs like 50 pounds. So if you're doing this by yourself and you're uncomfortable with lifting 50 pounds above your head, which I might even be, <laughs> we'll see. Just make sure you, you're safe and you don't you know, do something that's gonna hurt you or strain your back. Because these machines are awesome, but they're also awesomely heavy. Anyway. You can see why it's so heavy. It's cast iron and the motor is attached to it. So it, it's gonna be heavy. All right, so there's a hole on the bottom of this right here. You wanna make sure you get that perfectly seated on this column right here, like so. There we go, and when it sets down, you'll feel it kinda of, kind of set like that. So this will spin a little freely here. You wanna make sure that you have this aligned, or in line, I guess, with your base and the front of the drill press about as straight as you can get it it doesn't i don't think it really i don't know does it really matter you can just kind of eyeball it 
and that looks pretty good. All right, so there's a set screw right here in the side, and that's what's gonna hold this tight to the column and not let this shift and move. So we're just gonna use the Allen wrench that was included to tighten this set screw. All right, so the next thing that I wanna do here with this uh, drill press head is I wanna install these feed handles. And there should be three of them, like so. There's actually a fourth handle, but it's a little smaller and that's gonna go on the uh, speed adjustment on the other side. So we'll set that aside for now. Just go ahead and screw these handles into place, like so, just like that. It does tell you to use a wrench, an adjustable wrench, to tighten these completely. I'm gonna use this vice grip, and to keep from marring and scratching the surface of this, I'm just gonna use this cloth, this little piece of shirt that I was using to kind of wipe off the grease earlier. I'm just gonna wrap that slightly around this, so that way I don't mar the surface of this too bad. But now, it's not going to come loose on me. Oh, look at that. Now we're pretty much done. All right, so I hopped over to the other side and while we're putting handles on, let's go ahead and put this speed handle on. Like I said, it's a little bit smaller, but it threads right into this little black uh, thing right here. I don't really know what this is, but it's the only one that's completely black on this side. So just feed it in. Hey, gotta get the right angle and there it goes. So feed that in there. There we go. That's not coming out. And I don't know if I'm supposed to turn this while the machine's off or not. So I'm gonna hold off on that <laughs> and just, uh, just be patient guys, be patient. So the next part of the manual just basically talks about the light bulb and you can see that here. I went ahead and removed it so you guys could get a good look at it. Looks like it's a regular width uh, terminal to actually screw the bulb in. So you could replace this with any bulb, I'm guessing. I would just do uh, an LED bulb because uh, you are gonna get a good life out of that and you can select the brightness with it. I don't know what this bulb looks like yet because I have not turned it on, but I have read some people actually replace the light bulb and if it's not you know, bright enough for me, then I'll do the same. But I'm sure it will be all right. I already have good lighting in my garage now anyway, so I'm not too worried about it, but I just wanted to show you real quick. And that just screws right up inside of here. I mean, you really can't even see it, so it's, it's out of the way. It seems like a nice feature. All right, so the next thing we need to do is install the chuck. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. You can see it's still coated in grease. So first thing I'm gonna do, back to the WD-40. And they say use kerosene, but I think WD-40 will do just fine. Hopefully, because that's what I've been using. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the package. And I'm just going to wipe it down gently with this cloth here. That is a beautiful looking chuck, let me tell you. So it says 0 0.8 to 16 millimeters. Guessing those are the sizes that it accepts of shanks. I don't know. This is my first drill press, so I'm excited and ignorant. Also, I think we're supposed to clean this spindle here. If I can get up in there real good to clean it. Now it says inspect and clean the taper hole in the chuck. Looks, uh, looks pretty clean to me. Uh, it says and the spindle. Looks good. Imagine my surprise, this is like a giant drill, <laughs> right? So you can turn it counterclockwise to have these little things come in closer for a tighter shank, or you can turn it clockwise and the hole gets bigger. So basically it wants us to turn it all the way and just open it up. All right, so you also got this little piece here. This is called a chuck arbor. You can see there's a flat side that's pointing up and you can see there's a little bit of a fatter cylinder shape that I have pointing down. So you're gonna take that cylinder shape and you're gonna push it down into the top of the chuck, like so, right? So it doesn't go all the way to this little black line here, but it goes pretty close. Push it down in there real good. So you're gonna take this flat piece right here and insert it into the spindle right here. And then we're just gonna turn this until this flat portion finds the hole up in there and it'll, you'll feel it go up a little bit. So we're just gonna go up until it stops. You're gonna feel it stop 
and nothing is holding it in, right? You're just gonna feel it hit the top. So you're just gonna turn this one way or the other until you feel it kind of go up a little further. Oh, up right there, did you see that? So watch closely when I turn it, see it go up? That's what you want, right there, like that. So that lets you know we're in the right place. And now when I turn it, I'm actually turning the spindle. I see the spindle turning. So I know I'm in the right place. So this is where we need to really get this jammed up in there. And it sounds really weird. I never, I would have like read the instructions several times had I not watched uh, people put other drill presses together before. But you actually need to hit this with a hammer. But you don't wanna hit this directly with a solid metal hammer. So you have a couple of options here. You can either take a block of wood and use that as a barrier here, and then take the hammer and give it a tap, or you can use a rubber mallet, which I happen to have right below me. And this was not staged, I've literally just have this here. This is where I keep it. So the manual says just to do one tap, and it says firmly tap. So I'm gonna give one firm tap with this rubber mallet. You don't wanna use once again, you do not want to use a metal hammer because you will damage your chuck. So rubber mallet or use a block of wood or something to cushion the blow when you hit it. So let's give it one firm hit, one firm tap, I guess. Well, I guess I gave that two. But now I'm just going to turn this a little bit. It looks like this, it is set up in the spindle. I'm pulling on it just, just a little, not hard. It's not coming free where before it would have. So I think we're good. Right now, this uh, chuck spins pretty freely, both the head and the actual chuck and spindle. So I think, uh, I think we did our job, guys. I think we got it. All right, so we're under the table now. I've raised it up and you can see this roller here moves in and out. We want a way to make sure this roller doesn't move when we don't want it to. So Wynn was kind enough to include these little wing screws here. So I'm just gonna put those in right here, like so, just like that. There we go. Now you tighten these down and it's not going anywhere. All right, so I'm just gonna install a bride point drill bit here. All right, so I hand tightened it, but now we need to use the chuck key to actually get it as tight as we can. Now let's have a look. It actually does not look to be exactly 90 degrees. Yeah, it hits the bottom first on this side and there's a gap at the top. Hits the top first on this side and there's a gap at the bottom. So this table needs to go this way just a bit. doesn't need a huge adjustment just a small one right maybe there we go so there you go there's proof that you can definitely get this drill press to a solid 90 degrees I'm pretty dang happy with that and this seems to be right in the center of that hole now let's uh let's try to make some sawdust all right guys, so we're gonna try the drill press out for the first time here, and all I did was just clamp a little piece of uh, white oak scrap here onto the drill press. <laughs> I didn't really get it exactly centered or anything, and this X isn't where the drill bit's supposed to go. It's just saying this was my scrap piece <laughs> from, from the project that I'm currently building. So, uh, good enough. We'll just see how it goes through, uh, through this white oak. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. All right, now I'm gonna turn it up to 2,000. All right, let's see how it does.
and that kills pretty quick too. Nice. All right, so the hole that it drilled actually looks really, really nice. Granted, this is a brand new <laughs> drill bit. This is the first time I'm using this one. So, you know, may have something to do with the drill bit itself, but man, that glided right through that like butter. That was, that was nice. And it looks to be pretty straight. I mean, yeah, looks pretty clean too, especially for this being the backside. I mean, look, there's like zero tear out at all. So <laughs> this is becoming more of a review of this drill bit, I think, <laughs> but it did a nice job. And the drill press was really easy to use. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with it so far. Um, the other thing I wanted to check was the light. So that's actually a pretty white light. Like it, it looks like it's probably like a 5k, uh, color light. So I'm happy with that. That's actually what I was going to replace it with if I did replace the lights. Uh, let's see the laser. So one thing I did notice about the laser earlier, uh, just when I was initially looking at it, I don't think it is accurate from, at least mine is not accurate from the factory. Here's the middle of the X right here. And if I bring this down, you may not be able to see it. Let me make an indention. So if you see the middle of this laser is in the middle of the X, but the hole is actually over here. So it's probably like, it's probably like an eighth of an inch off, which is not very accurate in my opinion. So I think you can loosen a set screw on each side here and then turn these to line that up better. And that's probably what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna loosen this right here. Oh, look at that. Man, that's pretty cool. Just need to make sure it doesn't shift on me like that. Like that. Boom, bullseye. pretty good I mean I don't know if or when I would ever like rely on that laser honestly maybe if I just need something rough you know but yeah it really wasn't hard at all I mean just a couple of really quick adjustments and now it's pretty accurate but yeah I'm pretty happy with it I mean good lighting good laser good drill press all right guys before we wrap it up here i just wanted to go over the specifications of the drill press that i went over today and so that's the win 4214 that's the model number the motor is 120 volt 60 hertz 5 amps so that's pretty standard across what you're going to find in power tools in the united states uh, let's see the speed goes from 530 up to 3200 rpm at no load I ran it at about 2000 today and it went really, really smooth. I, you know, I really, really liked it. The chuck capacity goes from 1 8 of an inch all the way up to 5 8 of an inch. So that's pretty good. The stroke is 3 and an eighth inch. Uh, let's see, the swing is 12 inches. The capacity from the chuck to the base is 20 inches. The chuck taper, I'm not familiar with that or, or the spindle taper, honestly. The table bevel goes from 0 to 45 degrees left and right. See the laser, uh, not important really, just, just don't stare at it. The weight is 85 pounds, and I believe it. The head itself weighs about 80 pounds. So as I said earlier, if you're lifting this yourself, make sure that you know, you're know you not going to hurt yourself, basically. I think the manual actually says, yeah, here, with the help of a friend or a trustworthy foe. <laughs> All right, guys, that pretty much wraps everything up today. We got this thing put together. It really wasn't that hard, and I, I like it so far. I can't really give it an honest review yet because you know I haven't used it that much, but if you are interested in the performance of this thing, be sure to stay tuned because I have a project that is currently in the works that's gonna be pretty cool, and it's pretty big, and uh, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, and you're gonna get to see this thing put to, put to work. So definitely stay tuned for that. Subscribe, make sure you don't miss it. 
And uh, hopefully I answered all of your questions about this drill press today, with the only exception being, what the hell is this thing? I don't know, it's some kind of wrench, some kind of something. I don't know, it doesn't even mention it in the parts list in the manual, so you just get this free, crappy looking wrench thing that I didn't even use, so whatever. But if you guys enjoyed this, please leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions that I did not answer or if I said something that was wrong. I probably did. Try to find that. It's an Easter egg in the video. <laughs> if you find it, leave a comment down below and uh, point it out. It always makes me look really good. But be sure to follow me over on Instagram at Bentley Design Co. And make sure you subscribe here. And stay tuned because we have a lot more exciting things coming really soon. But until the next time I see you guys in the shop, which will be very soon. Keep making sawdust. I loosen this bolt up and I can... Woo! <laughs> Do not tilt the table while you have something on the table and have it come running off, rushing off at your face. So either this table isn't actually level or I'm stupid. <laughs>